Hello and welcome to the channel. Today what we're going to talk about is adding existing workflows and related artifacts to a Logic Apps and .NET Framework custom code workspace. Let's go. So we've recently announced the public preview of .NET Framework custom code. We've got that videos on my channel. We've got a blog post as well. And what we want to do in this video is discuss how we can add existing workflows and artifacts to the new Logic Apps workspace solution. So this video or this was a question, the, the need for this video was a question that I received on LinkedIn. And the question was, okay, I've got an existing Logic Apps project. How do I go ahead and add custom code to it? Now, I wouldn't recommend using that approach and hence me coming up with this video. Because the, of our, our underlying architecture, we need separate projects for our code and our workflows. And then as a result, we also need a workspace if we expect to do any sort of local debugging across the two project types. Each of the projects have specific configurations and build tasks in order for this to all work. So it will be much simpler to take existing assets and move it into the new workspace solution than it will be to try to retrofit something. So I would not recommend that. So that's the purpose of this video. I'm gonna take an existing project. I'm then gonna create a new workspace solution, copy over the related artifacts and get it working and show you exactly how to take care of this. So let's go ahead, let's dive in. Okay, so before we get into the demo, I figured it's worth going over this Logic App workspace and what are the various components of it just to help you um, understand why this is a better approach. So as I mentioned before, you can't mix source code and workflow projects, right? So uh, here on the right hand side, we've got a screenshot of a workspace. Here's the, the name right here. And then we've got two projects. We've got a functions project, and then we also have a logic app project. So these are created for us automatically. And we've also got this, uh, basically this uh, function, the sample function that's provided for us as well. Now within each, project here, we've got some very specific configurations. So we've got a .bs code folder with some various settings and configurations that we need, um, in part due to launching the, the correct debugger properly. Uh, we also have some build tasks here that are very important in terms of compiling and basically bin placing all of the assemblies that are outputted into the correct lib folder. Uh, inside of the workflow project. Now, in addition, the workflow project has its own configurations, this .bs code folder with its four files. And these files are different from one another. So like these are things that you'll have to do manually uh, in order to try to um, get this thing to work. And just as a sort of a side note, I kind of alluded to it, but just wanted to make sure it was explicit. The workflow or the Logic App project itself will never go ahead and call like uncompiled code, right? What it's going to be doing is it's it's going to be looking for code that's found in this lib custom net472 folder that exists right here. And it's gonna be basically enumerating uh, any of these sort of functions that have been been placed in this specific folder. Now, you can't simply bin place assemblies yourself. Um, you can, but that won't help with local debugging across projects, right? So, uh, like what you could do, and we, this is supported in the portal, right? You can go ahead and upload assemblies uh, that are based upon like the functions template that we have here, not just sort of, uh, just sort of say static assemblies from BizTalk. You do need the wrapper. Uh, and then I've got a video on this on the channel as well. But uh, you, you can go ahead and do that, but you know if you use this type of configuration, uh, you can actually do local debugging. Uh, it's gonna be much more difficult to get that debugging working otherwise. And then uh, just, you know, as I think it's sort of evident as I've talked through this, we've got a lot of configuration required to get this to work together. And so it's much easier to move workflows from an existing project into this new one, as opposed to trying to retrofit this into an existing project. I think that's sort of the key of, of this video itself. So we're gonna walk through a demo and you know these are kind of the high level steps um, that I'm gonna actually take, perform. In order to get this working, I'll create a new Logic App workspace. I'm gonna then copy artifacts. And so this is if applicable. You can see here, 
I've got an existing project that has map definitions, right? I'm using the new data mapper. I've got maps, so I've got the XSLT files for them. I've got schemas, and so these are all things that I want to move into my new project. I'm also going to have some workflows here. I've got like my workflow one, two, and three, and in each of these folders, I got a workflow.json file. Those are all going to need to be copied across. I've also got a connections.json. So we're going to see that I, I did this deliberately. I created a uh, the I'm using the Outlook.com connector so that I can create a connection and show you how to think about that. And then also managing the local settings.json file as well. And so this is all quite important in order to get this all working. All right, so this is the existing project that you saw the screenshot for. Now there's one thing I wanted to call out here. Uh, we've got in the third workflow, we've got a outlook.com send an email action. Now what happens when we go ahead and do that is we are going to establish a connection. And so this is now showing up in our connections.json. So this is something that we want to copy uh, as well into the new project. And just kind of assuming that we're keeping things in the same subscription and whatnot. So that's kind of an assumption here. Then also note we've got an app setting and we've got this outlook-connection key. Now this is something that we will find uh, in our local.settings.json file as well. So I'm just going to flip back to the slides here and just sort of compare the differences. So this is the existing project. And when we create a new project, this is what it's going to look like. Now for here, it's pretty safe to just basically like uh, replace the new projects, local.settings.json file with the existing, but mileage may vary. Like this is something you probably just want to be aware of and, and just sort of making sure that there's not, additional things that you're overwriting that are missing, things of that nature. But for this exercise, I did just replace it, but just be aware. And then you can see here, we've got this connection. Uh, this is cut off, so, you know, don't bother copying it. But uh, yeah, like that's just, it's important just to understand the local settings. Otherwise, you know, worst case scenario, you just have to reestablish your connections. So kind of up to you in terms of like what you would prefer, but just wanted to call that out. Okay, so we're back in to VS Code, and let's just go ahead and close this out. So let's just close folder. Now we wanna focus on creating a new workspace. We'll click on the Azure A, then we'll find this icon, and you can see it says Create New Logic App Workspace. So let's go ahead and do that. Now what we need to do is create a folder so we'll go ahead and do that. We'll just call this new project. Now we're going to get prompted for a workspace name. Let's just call this new project as well. The function name, uh, we have like boilerplate code. So we'll just call this weather forecast because that is what that code will do. Namespace can be pretty much anything. So let's go ahead and do this. Uh, we'll create a stateful workflow and we'll open in the current window. So now we've got the shell of our solution here. We've got a workspace file. We've got our functions project. We've got our logic apps project. Now what we can do now is start to copy our files over. Okay, so on the left, our existing project. On the right, our new project. So let's click into that. Then let's go into our logic app. Start with artifacts. We'll go ahead and copy all of these files. Head over here and paste that. Go up a directory. Find our three workflow folders, right? So one, two, and three here. Then we'll just paste them into the logic app folder. Then we've got our connections.json and our local settings.json. And we'll go ahead. Now we're gonna get prompted to replace because we've got a local settings. As I mentioned before, in this case, it's good, but I always sort of compare the two before you go ahead and do that. So now we've got our project largely in place. We do have our, our code kind of complaining, and that's because it hasn't been built yet, which is fair. So let's go in, select functions as our folder, do a .NET restore, 
well, we need to type that properly. And then we'll follow that up with a .NET build. So that's compiled. We now have our assemblies and dependencies all loaded into our Logic Apps project. So we need to start Azureite. So we want to do that in the context of our Logic Apps workflow project. So let's do that three times. Now what we can go ahead and do is attach to our Logic App. Since we're not calling the custom code, we don't really need to do that right now. We don't need to worry about that debugger. So we'll just take a few moments and we should see our endpoints loading up here and then we should be good. Okay, we've got our endpoints loaded up. If we come now over to our project view, let's go and take a look just at our first workflow. And this is the workflow that came from our other project. In this case, it is going to go ahead and call uh, basically using the new data mapper, an existing XSLT file, right? We can see that. Let's go ahead and then open this in overview. Should be able to get the endpoint, which we are here. So we can copy that, head over to Postman. Now let me move Postman over here and we'll just replace this URL. Okay, got our payload already set up. Content type is application XML. Let's go ahead and hit submit. And we see we've got a response. If we head back over to Logic Apps, we do see we've got a run. Now, that's cool. Let's now check on our other scenario where we had the connection from Azure. Right, so that's here. Now this is on our recurrence. So basically when I load this up, this should run. And so we can see that it just ran uh, just about a minute ago. And if we go ahead and take a look at the output, we can see that that is working as well. So that should put us in pretty good shape. So we, we've got a working project. Uh, so uh, our, all of those copying and pasting that all worked for us. All right, so that concludes this video. Hopefully that helps explain the concepts, gets you a little bit more familiar with the underlying architecture and setup inside of VS Code. And hopefully that shows you it's actually not that much work. Uh, you know, this video is about 10 minutes long uh, in order to get that all working. So hopefully that helps. If you're not following me on Twitter, go ahead and find me at Weirzy. Likes, subscribes, comments, welcome on YouTube. Thanks and take care.